Today we're taking a look at the Huron. This ship will be available part of the Puerto Rico Dockyard event. This ship will be available sometime along the upgrade track for the Puerto Rico. Everyone can get this ship for free. You just have to complete enough of those dockyard missions. This ship is a tier seven destroyer, much like Haida, except it's got no smoke. So Haida's gimmick, of course, is it's crawling smoke and it's amazing concealment. The Huron doesn't have the concealment and it doesn't have the crawling smoke, but in exchange, you get a better hydro and you get yourself a heal, which is huge at tier seven, especially on destroyers. At this tier, they are lacking a lot of concealment and a ton of HP. Notice we have over 18,000 HP here. Combined with three heals, this ship is extremely tanky and tough to take down. So of course, with that playstyle, we want to be pushing extremely aggressively into capture zones. Against other tier seven destroyers, this ship wants to be taking a lot of gunfights. Like every DD with a heal, over the long term, that heal is going to carry you through a lot of games. Where taking a fight with a Shiratsuyu, for example, well, no heal there. All the damage that gets dealt to him is permanent. And by spotting him early, our teammates can then take some shots as well. As uh, unfortunately, our friend here is not very happy in the chat. Our Atlanta, I think, got a few pretty solid hits in on him. But this is really the play style we wanna be going after with the Huron. The torpedoes, while they do hit hard, you only have four of them. It's not amazing. This ship really does want to take these gunfights. So as soon as I go dark and as soon as it seems like the enemy team has left this area, I'm pushing aggressively. I want to go try and find this DD again. I assumed that he had run away at this point, regrouped with his team. Um, but no, he's here, so we're gonna take him out. And this is a great way to win games, is just focusing on enemy destroyers. And Huron does this extremely well. Of course, there are weaknesses. Notice the turret angles, right? This rear turret is extremely, extremely difficult to use without showing full broadside. And assuming we're kiting away, not pushing in, one of the front turrets also has a really horrible angle firing backwards. But the middle turret, I believe, is 360. So there is some really nice things here for a gunboat DD. It's not the fastest thing in the world. And yeah, this one was just a blowout. So I <laughs> just, uh, yeah, there's a lot of sailing around. Basically all I did was go after the DD. I think this ship is pretty solid. The DPM is also better than the Haida where we have a 4.2 second reload instead of Haida's five second reload, which feels really, really, really nice. But this thing is not as good at farming as the Haida. It's a big ship, very easy target. The shells are quite floaty, so making use of that 12 kilometer range is a little bit difficult, even into very slow battleships like this. I think that the Haida will be a better ship overall than the Huron, but the playstyle here is quite interesting. And for a lot of people, I think they'll get more value out of these heals than they will out of the crawling smokes. The crawling smokes do take some very specific positioning to make use of, whereas a heal is always useful on a ship like this. Yeah, those arcs are pretty bad as we're seeing here. But notice that Sims, we took that little engagement with him at the beginning, he's down to 7,000 HP and that's all permanent damage. The Huron really wants to take these engagements. Getting too aggressive though can be a bit of an issue, especially if there's an unspotted Belfast on the enemy team, yes. <laughs> Guess what's gonna be here? But what you have to remember is the ships that have radar tend to only have a limited range and that duration is limited as well. So all you gotta do in those situations that you're going to get radared, you gotta wiggle a little bit to try and throw off their aim. And then when you know the shells are coming in, you try and be as narrow as possible. That way the vast majority of the shells are going to hopefully miss us. Notice how I was wiggling there. And then I paused wiggling just to make sure I was as narrow as I could possibly be. We mitigated a lot of damage and we get healing. Of course, we didn't take a bunch of damage there, but it's really nice to have a ship with so much HP at tier seven. That's really the strength of the Huron. It's not got the best concealment, but you got to keep in mind that 6.2, I believe, is still amazing at tier seven, considering these DDs don't get access to the concealment upgrade in like the tier eights do. 
that is one of the biggest strengths of tier eight destroyers over tier sevens is they just gain that extra little bit of concealment. And Huron almost has that baked in. Uh, yeah, I said the Torps weren't all that amazing, but when they hit, they do a ton of damage. <laughs> uh, that poor guy's now. I've been there, I've been there. Brawling battleship, trying to push in, help your team win. The game's quickly getting out of hand. It's a blowout already. And then you eat a face full of torps. It hurts. It hurts. And these torps do an absolute ton of damage. Of course, continuing on with the really the UK line trait, where you have the ability to single launch these torps. Sometimes they hit, and they hit extremely hard. With this hydro and lack of a smoke, being constantly mobile is actually a really good thing. We're able to spot a lot for our team, and we're honestly screening torpedoes a lot of the time with this ship for our teammates as well. I'm going to be trying to farm this New York here, but that I don't have a smoke screen to take advantage of means that I don't ever get caught in a situation where I smoke up to try and farm something, and then I was the one spotting it, and then it's just a wasted smoke, right? There is some downsides to smoke screens if they're not used correctly. Here, you don't have to worry about that. You're just a gunboat DD. Notice how slow it is though, right? This is not a fast gunboat DD, so you have to be a little bit careful. The advantage here really is your health pool. So keeping that in mind, you probably do want to try and save as much of your HP for the late game or for those DD versus DD engagements. Honestly found this ship to be pretty enjoyable to play. Although I really love the consumables that the Haida has. I really, really do enjoy playing Haida. It feels like a very high skill ship where you're using concealment, you're using your amazing crawling smoke to really go after your capture points. The Huron doesn't quite have that fun factor for me personally, but for the free ship that you're going to be able to get out of the dockyard, I think the Huron's great. It's a really interesting DD, and having a heal is always a nice thing for people trying to learn how to play a ship, because you can make a lot of mistakes and still come back from them using that heal. And if you do manage to land those conga line torps, yeah, it hurts. That was 48k into that poor nice now. So much like the Haida, I think there are a lot of fun games to be had here. We're going to take a look at the commander on the Haida since my rental period for the Huron has expired today as I'm recording this. But uh, this is the commander I'm using, right? We're trying to maximize that HP, we're trying to get more healing out of our ship, and we're trying to stay alive with last stand and preventive maintenance, that kind of thing. Definitely wanting to use Concealment Expert, the best upgrade for any destroyer. And I was taking Adrenaline Rush here. I think it's a better skill to start with than something like Main Battery and AA Specialist or Fearless Brawler. But since there's no smoke on the Huron, I would definitely want to run Fearless Brawler. But if you do have a Haida and you're trying to switch the commanders in between them, I think Main Battery and AA Specialist will be just a little bit better since you can make use of this 5% reload all the time when you're in smoke on your Haida and there's times when you want to use island cover and farm over islands with the poor arcs on the Huron, and you're not going to make use of that fearless brawler in those situations. But if you just have the Huron and you only have a commander for that, I think fearless brawler is definitely the way to go. As for the upgrades that I was running on the Huron, I was definitely wanting to run propulsion. We want to be running aiming systems as well. I have smoke generator here on high dub because <laughs> It's it's a fun gimmick, all right? It's fun on Haida, all right? But aiming systems mod, we're trying to make the most use out of our guns. And yeah, engine room protection and main armaments mod one. Pretty standard stuff. So overall, I think I had a lot of fun so far in the Huron. I'll definitely be playing it more once I get it out of the dockyard event. But that's been my first impressions for now. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.